All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another episode of the Triple Option Podcast. For today's episode, we are going to be going over each of our three favorite and three least favorite free agency signings from the 2024 offseason. We're going to start off kind of going around giving our least favorite, and then we'll do the uh, we'll do our favorite after that. Um, so, what's going on, Tom? What's going on, Dom? How are we doing? What's up, guys? All right, uh, Tom, you want to lead us off? You want to give us your first? um least favorite signing unless there's any news that we got to talk about leading up to the draft but we're kind of in that wait and see period yeah it's smoke screen season i think everything that comes out from now until april is going to be either ridiculously fake or so true that they want it to seem fake yeah we're, people are just probably bored at this point um but i, I don't nothing's probably changed on our top threes because we still had the prediction that it's going to be three quarterbacks to start it and it's most likely yeah. going to be washington and, and new england still picking yep all right so, um, I'm going to start off with, as I was researching this video, um, I think I came up with a pretty good stat here. Robert Hunt, I'm having as my first bad contract. He was a big, the biggest name on the offensive line, probably in the offseason. He got five for a hundred crazy quick, big contract. However, he was below average in both pass block win rate and run block win rate. So how much of this is kind of, I don't want to say off the name. But to give somebody who is giving you below average production in across league averages to make him the second highest paid his position, kind of crazy to me. So that that that's that's a, a not so good contract. And to boot, it's the Panthers paying a lot of money for a guy who may be an overpay. Bad news long term for teams like the Panthers. Yeah, I also had Robert Hunt down. Um, I, I like the idea of them going out and getting a like offensive lineman because this offensive line was terrible last year. And like getting the idea of getting Robert Hunt is good, but also paying him when he's up there with Landon Dickerson, Chris Lynch, Stroman, Quinn, and Nelson, probably not as good, but that's what's going to happen when these guys hit the open market. I mean, they like the only thing that was like, like I was like, all right, like they had money to spend and at least they spent it. Like they could have kind of penny pinched. So I'm glad they went out and got Robert Hunt. Um, but yeah, like it's $20 million for an interior offensive lineman that, um, is probably a little bit of an overpay compared to kind of the people around him. And like, I'm just kind of looking cause off the top of my head, I don't think he was an all pro last year. Um, he wasn't no, was he a even, pro no, not even a pro bowler. Um, or at least I don't think so. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a lot of money for someone. I mean, like pro bowl or not like that, I guess doesn't matter too much, but like not even having an all pro under your belt. Um, and Never maybe, pro bowl. yeah, so that, that's a lot of money, um, for an interior offensive lineman. But like I said, like the Panthers, they'd moved Brian Burns. Um, they let people walk, like they, they had to pay somebody. So I'm glad they're at least investing somewhat into their offensive line, but they're probably a team that could still use a receiver or two. Uh, Dom, did you have Robert Hunt as well? I didn't just because like how you brought up the point they needed just to protect Bryce Young so they had to use the money so that that kept him off of my list but I do I do understand the reasoning if they're just overpaying bad guys it's uh, gonna catch up to them mm -hmm. yeah. all right who was your uh, guy Dom because I also had Robert Hunt so the first guy I'll start with is Tony Pollard and this is a mix of I think it's a bad contract and a mix of I don't understand why the Titans did it um item two so like last season Tony Pollard ran for four yards per attempt. Taji Spears in his rookie season had four and a half. So he was already better in that aspect. Spears also had 52 catches and this was already playing alongside Derrick Henry. So I didn't really see them a need for them to go after Pollard. Sure, he's only making seven mil a year and they let Derrick Henry walk in free agency. So maybe they still needed a nice complimentary running back to pair with Spears. But I just don't fully understand like spears is making absolutely no money he looks pretty promising they could have ran with that and maybe use this money somewhere else but if they like the whole two-headed monster in the backfield i guess they can go that route but uh just just the mix the mix of the money the fit the player i mean also just from a titans fan perspective wouldn't you rather just hold on to derrick henry instead of seeing him like walk off onto another team thousand percent if i'm a titans fan because Tony Pollard's never proven that he can be like a primary option in like a, like a a one running back backfield. Like he was always really good behind Zeke, and this was his first year, and he didn't show like he didn't he never looked anywhere near as good as Henry did. Pretty much in any of the years, and Henry's had an injury history too. Like he was I think he had the foot injury in 2022, so you think he'd take a step back in 23, but he still looked pretty good. So. If you're the Titans, I don't know, it's just a little baffling to me. For essentially the same contract, like, why would you not want to keep the guy who, if you're growing up a Titans fan, was probably your favorite player your entire life? Agreed. Yeah. Um, all right, so you you also had Tony Pollard, Tom? I did have Tony Pollard on mine as well, yeah. 
Okay. Um, I will. I had like kind of a running back that I wanted to talk about. I had two receivers, but I guess maybe I don't know if you both have two receivers remaining. If not, we'll talk about both of them anyway. But I really wasn't a fan of like Austin Eckler getting a contract as well. Now it's really just technically a one-year deal worth four million dollars. Um, but I, I don't think he was good. Like Brian Robertson was like objectively better than Austin Eckler last year, and he at least provides you a little bit more in the receiving game, and that's something we've seen from Eckler before as well. Um, I don't know. I just thought Washington could have had some better uh, options out there rather than traded a seventh round pick for Joe Mixon um, with all the caps that they had, then go out and get Austin Eckler, who I don't think moves the needle. I don't think he's going to be like a great running back behind um, Drake May, and I do think like in the year 2024, Brian Robinson will be better if they were having equal opportunity. I doubt that happens. Eckler is probably gonna get most of the workload just because he's a veteran um, and maybe is better. And maybe I'm just a little bit higher on Brian Robinson, but I just don't think that Eckler was really even worth looking at, especially if you're a team like the Commanders who had all this cap space and have so many other needs on the roster and running back really wasn't one of them. I don't know if you guys felt the same about Eckler. I think, um, I think Eckler will probably just replace Gibson and like his play style, honestly. Like I don't think, I think there's a good chance Eckler gets more catches than rushing attempts this season. Like I think, I think there's a chance that he doesn't run the ball that much. And maybe he just catches a few passes out of the backfield. So like, and then you mentioned it was a one-year deal. I did think about putting Eckler, but the fact that it was like a one-year deal and not a too crazy overpay made me keep it off. But I do understand the logic. Like if you think Brian Robinson's better, you might as well just give him more opportunities in general instead of bringing in competition. Yeah, Brian Robinson had the fourth most receiving yards from a running back last year. So I thought he was already like a good enough receiving back. So I didn't really think it'd be worth it to go out and get Eckler specifically. But I'd rather them just got a different running back if that was going to be the case. Um, so uh, Dom, who's your second guy that you thought was a bad signing? Uh, so I have another receiver and a defensive player. I'll go with the receiver here just because I think you might also have him and you already alluded to it. Um, I have Gabe Davis written mm -hmm. down. I don't know if that's who you had. Good. So, all right um i don't mention though so i could I, I could slide him in at the end uh so gabe davis got three for 39 with 24 million guaranteed one big thing that stood out to me was that he has three void years at the end of this contract so from a financial standpoint i think it's it, i think it's not super beneficial to the jaguars that they're going to have to pay gabe davis his money and then also while he's not on the team he'll be against their cap three years from now um and then just from a player standpoint Last season, he played seven games where he had one or no catches, and in the past two years combined, he's has over he has under a hundred total catches. So I understand he's not getting like a huge bag, like thirteen million a year is not a crazy amount. But when you disappear in almost half the games in a season, and this draft class is supposed to have a lot of really good wide receivers, who are obviously cheaper than thirteen mil, I think I'd rather go that route. And also with the Jaguars, they don't really have a wide receiver one right now i guess if you want to say it that way like they have christian kirk who i i guess could be a wide receiver one but i guess ultimately i don't think he i don't think he's like in that tier yet and gabe davis would have to be a wide receiver two he kind of struggled when stefan Diggs was his wide receiver one so how is he going to perform now with christian kirk as his wide receiver one i don't know i just i think this was maybe a little bit of a panic move like they knew they weren't getting ridley back they had to spend the money somewhere so i don't i don't love this move that much by the jaguars especially in the year they're in with trevor lawrence like it seems like you need all hands on deck and all the resources and they downgraded it seems yeah I, I completely agree with davis i kind of had him down as well um and like just just like some other guys like around him or even a little bit cheaper that you'd rather have than gabe davis like i, I don't know if they were going to be in the hollywood brown sweepstakes but that could have been somebody they could have looked at maybe take a flyer on one of the like the texans receivers that could have been on the block like there's even a chance like zay jones is just better than gabe davis right now like gabe davis i think is a little bit overrated um like you kind of alluded to so um tom who uh i don't know if your honorable mention is going to be the same as my last guy is he also a receiver He's not a receiver. He's actually a quarterback. Okay. So, uh, here, I'll just say, I'll, well, let's go on my uh, receiver and then you can give the quarterback. So I just wanted to mention Calvin Ridley. Just I thought it was a ton of money for somebody that I don't really think could be a wide receiver one now. Uh, he is 30 years old. It is a year. Uh, it was his first year back from the suspension from gambling. So maybe it was just kind of like him getting back, just kind of acclimated to the NFL like feel of things. But I just thought it was a little bit of an overpay. Um, he's getting paid more than like Terry McLaurin, Stephon Diggs, um, DJ Moore, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, Amari Cooper. A lot of wide receivers that are better than him and are also not much like that much older than him um and i do think that the texans needed a wide receiver one um 
but I don't know. Maybe I would have just waited. Maybe I would have just drafted Roma Dunze. Maybe I would have just traded for T. Higgins. I know it would have cost you a pick and and a lot of money, but I think like Higgins is just a little bit better than Calvin Redway is a wide receiver one. So I just think like I guess it goes back to the the Panthers side of things. Like they needed a receiver for sure, but if it doesn't work out, like Robert Hunt, if he doesn't work out for the Panthers, they're kind of screwed just because of how much money they're uh, giving this position. Um, and I also, I, it's not technically a free agency signing because he got traded for an extended, but the Jared Judy contract, I kind of hate. He's yeah, getting paid I mean, way yeah. too much money. Yeah, he, I mean, he got almost as much money as Ridley. And like, I would say, I mean, I guess he is six years younger, probably. Maybe yeah, he's five 24, years younger, but, yeah. but still, I mean, Jared Judy hasn't given you production that warrants 20 mil, but I guess... 30 mil is the new 20 mil for receiver, so whatever. Yeah, I guess that's what I got to figure out. Um, so uh, who is your honorable mention quarterback? So it's not so much the details of the contract and the numbers and everything, but I think the fact that that, that the Vikings are trotting out Sam Donald week one as of right now, if they don't make a quarterback, a trade is kind of crazy. I think they're going to try and make a trade up, but there's a ton of teams that could be jumping into that to get that fourth quarterback that are not in the top three. Like there's five or six teams. If the Vikings don't pull that off and like they don't have the best package, they're going to want to have the, the brought out Sam Donald with Jefferson in that looking for the biggest contract of all time with Addison in a crucial development year. Uh, Hawkinson still in his prime. You have the perhaps the best like weapons trio in the NFL and one of and you're going to try out Sam Donald. It's just it's puzzling to me and I think they could have competed in a at least made a playoff push but hopefully they get their guy though. I mean I hope they you know I don't hope they get their guy because the Giants are probably competing for the same guys so whatever the vision is for the Giants I hope that works out for them so sorry Vikings yeah it kind of has like a little bit of like a Buffalo Bills like Mitch Trubisky feel to it as like it's not even like Sam Darnold showed anything in San Francisco that made us think that he can go back to being like that number three overall pick that he was. Like Mitch Trubisky, I think, showed out in some preseason games. He really wasn't like a Gardner Minshew story this year that actually had a decent enough sample size. Like Darnold didn't even play until the end of the season and it wasn't enough to really like evaluate him. So I think it's going to be overhyped because he was maybe the backup on a Super Bowl team. He's still young, but I guess it's like not the biggest risk. But I see where you're coming from for sure. I don't think I think it's, it's just the fact it seems like they're just like not trying to compete. And I mean, they, they, they better... They better get that trade done or else it's going to be a tough season for McConnell and his offense because he's going to be very limited with Donald, the quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, Dom, who was your last guy? So my last guy, I'm going to bring us to the defensive side of the ball. Chase Young getting $13 million fully guaranteed from the Saints, I think is kind of ridiculous considering he just had neck surgery. And I know they're going to say he's ready for the start of the season, but that still has to be a little concerning that it's going to lead right up to the start of the season. And then additionally, the Saints have just been in cap trouble for almost 10 years now, it seems like. And I mentioned with the Gabe Davis void years, Chase Young will have four void years after this one year and 10 million of it will be uh, in 2025. So he won't be on the team. He'll be costing the Saints $10 million. They already like just don't have cap. So them just trying to, I don't want to say go all in this year, but make a move for this season for an injured guy who... I mean, if it works out and they re-sign him, I'm sure that fixes these numbers. But going after a guy who's already hurt when you don't have the money, I think is, um, I think it's an interesting move to say the least. Yeah, I, I agree. And yeah, like you said, teams that like they just don't have cap space, and like the Saints could also just be such a mess of a team again this year if Derek Carr doesn't show any progression from last year. It was just so bad. Um, and I think, yeah, and like you mentioned, it, like this the Saints team if they're if they're bad this if they're bad this season all those future cap years are just essentially wasted then it's not like they're competing right now like there's another guy i'll bring up when we talk to the good contracts but the team's going all in now so they're just going to push the money later the saints really i don't see a reason for them to try to push money later like they should try to fix it because this season i mean i don't think they have high expectations this season to to keep it lightly yeah um there's one more guy i i'm surprised like nobody mentioned either um so like say there's a 26 year old or he's about to be 27 year old receiver uh, i have i off, have him i have someone written down and it might be the guy you're about to coming write. off 31 catches for 414 yards in 15 games would you pay that person 13 mil a year is that kendrick Bourne? oh no whoa whoa whoa, whoa. i disagree I'm, I'm i'm on kendrick Bourne. i think he's good i was talking about darnell mooney oh yeah no darnell mooney and game dave like they just all lump all yeah. those receivers that got three for like 40 i just think are uh interesting but 
What did Born um, yeah, get? Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely contemplated uh, Mooney. Mooney, yeah. What did Born get? Born got three for thirty-three, but once I re-looked at it, he can really get cut after this season for absolutely nothing. So it's essentially a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. um, I think he can get cut next season, and it would be like a two million dollar cap it compared to or two million dead cap compared to like ten million cap it. So uh, I, I took him off my list, but I did have him initially. Gotcha. Yeah, he's gonna be the wide receiver one for Jaden Daniels next year. Yeah, for a, a guy that's like a career high is like 500 yards. <laughs> um, all right, we get off to our favorite uh, free agency signings. Um, pretty much of the off season so far. Dom, you can lead us off, and then you can go Tom, and then I'll go last, and then we'll go around. All right. Um, first off, I'm gonna start with the San Francisco 49ers getting Leonard Floyd. So I I went for a whole bunch of value when trying to do um my good contracts. Leonard mm. Floyd got two years for 24 million. That would put him, uh. I had him written down as 37th, I believe, because it's only 12 mil a year. So he'd be the 37th highest paid edge rusher. He had 10 and a half sacks last year with the Bills. He was really good with the Rams when they had Aaron Donald. So by him going to a D-line with um, Hargrave and Bosa, I think that will just really benefit him. And he's already 31, so he's maybe on the older side, but it's only a two-year deal. It's relatively cheap for a team that's trying to win a Super Bowl as quickly as they can, and he has the production numbers to back it up. So I think that is a very good signing for the Niners. Yeah, and he's kind of turned his career around completely. Like, he was kind of a bust as a top 10 pick in Chicago, yeah. and then, like, completely turns it around in Los Angeles. And he's had, what, over nine sacks each of the last four seasons. That's pretty cool. Really solid, like, second option on the edge, like, no matter what. Yeah, and, like, yeah, like Dom said, him with Bosa and Hargrave, like, they're going to be good because they lost, uh, I guess they lost Chase Young this offseason. And I think Floyd's probably better. Yeah. Would yeah. you rather, would you rather have Leonard Floyd, Floyd for 12 million or Chase Young at 13 coming off neck surgery? I mean, yeah. I'm taking Leonard Floyd. <laughs> for that's, sure. That was my logic. All right, Tom, who drove? My top guy is a little, I, it's a free agent signing because even though they stay with the same team, Jalen Johnson, four for 76 to stay in Chicago. I think that's a fantastic deal. It's less than $20 million a year average heat for a, ascending top five ish corner like he's playing he played fantastic last year and now chicago locks up homegrown talent that they are going to be keeping bringing into the caleb williams era they have a key uh, a key playmaker at a position of extreme value locked up don't have to worry about it for four years i think it's a fantastic deal for chicago yeah, I definitely agree. And he's just so young too, and it was definitely worth it. And like, that's like, I think a good way of using your cap space too, if you have to spend it, like for them to keep their guy. Um, exactly, like keep your guy. And you 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 know, he knows your system, everything. And like, you feel confident bringing in your new quarterback and giving him a playmaker on the defensive side. Yeah, Um. just on the topic of Chicago, did any of you guys think about like Dondre Swift for the worst signings at all? Not the mm. Andre Swift, but I, no. um, I have a, the running back signings are, are around this list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the first guy I'm going to talk about is uh, is Russell Wilson. I mean, it's probably the best bang for your buck you can get this offseason. Yeah, like one year, $1.2 million. Obviously, it's because the Denver Broncos are paying him $30 plus million, so this benefits the Steelers. But the list of quarterbacks he's going to be making less than next year, Malik Willis, Nathan Peterman, Tyler Huntley, John Wolford, Kyle Allen is going to be making 70 k more than Russell Wilson, who the Steelers signed to be the third string. Davis Mills, Desmond Ritter, Josh Johnson, Kyle Trask, Nick Mullins, Brandon Allen, Josh Dobbs, Dom favorite cj bethard mitch trubisky is gonna be making more cooper rush like you get the point it's obviously like a cooper great rush, value contract it. yeah and like either and like some of those guys could end up better than russell wilson and russell wilson may not even finish the year but for somebody that has top 20 quarterback potential for getting at that value i mean it's it's, it's a yeah. steal for the steelers obviously it's not for the broncos but um and that, there's a reason why the steelers got him for so cheap but i feel like that's probably one of the better bang for your buck signings yeah. I would say so for sure. I think just off the, the the pure fact that you're essentially paying him nothing and another team is paying him forty million dollars, like it just seems like a win win. Like mm -hmm. you get like you said, he, he he could be an average quarterback for sure, and to get him for no money, it's a no brainer for that the Steelers could really benefit that elsewhere. Definitely. Dom, yeah, did you have him as well on your list or did you assume we were all gonna have him? Yeah, I, I didn't even dumbfound right now. I'm looking at his face and he seems like he's like, I cannot believe you guys are saying this right now. No, 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 no. I didn't even write down him because I knew you were gonna bring him up, so I was like, I'm not gonna waste one of my three on him. Cause you're mm -hmm. I mean, you're right. Like, no matter what he performs, you're paying him absolutely nothing. So if you're like no matter what you get, you're not you're not expecting him to be crazy because you're not paying him crazy. If he overperforms literally anything, it's considered good. So like I, I left him off because I knew you were gonna bring him up. So but I do I do agree though. Like I think it's a great there contract we go. for bang for the buck. 
Gotcha. Yeah, he was my uh, my first honorable mention because I, I I put a couple guys in case we have overlap. Mm -hmm. So now yeah. I still have three guys on my list. Okay, cool. Dom, who's uh, your second guy? So I'm gonna go with Bryce Huff to the Eagles because of the fact again, talking about value, he has he will be the 19th highest paid edge rusher based on average. He had 10 sacks last year. He turns 26 in a few days. So if he just keeps on progressing and improving. I think this contract will be a steal. I mean, we just saw Brian Burns and Josh Allen get over $30 million. Hey. If we're talking, I'm just, uh, I'm using generics right now. We're talking about edge rushers getting $30 million. Bryce Huff had 10 sacks and he's getting 17. Like at some point that has to factor in uh, to it. And what I alluded to talking about the Saints and their cap situation, I did notice that the Eagles pushed off roughly like 20 million dollars of this until the first season when bryce huff is off the team so that's a future eagles problem but their window to try to win is right now so for them to push off the money and focus on doing it now i think that this shows them and they were able to essentially get bryce huff for hassan reddick if you want to think of it that way because they mm -hmm. essentially just swapped edge rushers so i do think uh this was a good sign by the eagles like i mentioned he's only going to be he turns 26 actually uh april 17th so um be he'll still be in his prime maybe get a bigger payday later on down the line but as of right now i think for only 17 mil a year it's a pretty good deal for an edge rusher yeah and also i do want to throw in so hassan reddick i think the eagles knew the entire time he was leaving they were looking for his replacement beforehand um huff also played 42 percent of snaps last year reddick played 74 percent of snaps so in an almost doubled role i am interested to see what he does with good um defensive line help from josh Wood on the other side Agreed. It's gonna be fun. Um, quick tangent on the, just on the Eagles because I was asking like my Eagles friends uh, last weekend, like, do they think like Devonta Smith is gonna get paid? And they're like, yeah, of course. Like he's not going anywhere. And then I'm like, what team has paid two elite receivers while also having an elite quarterback? Like that never happens. Like the Chiefs didn't pay Hill when they had Kelsey. We're seeing they that with Higgins. With Higgins and Chase. Yeah, we're not seeing that with Higgins. I don't know if like Waddle. Like we'll see about that. Um, and then like I don't know. It just like never happens. And like the Eagles paid Saquon. They resigned. Um, uh, Jordan Mulata, they re-signed Landon Dickerson, they uh, brought in Bryce Huff, like we said, Saquon Barkley, um, and they're paying a ton of guys. Like, a lot of guys are getting paid. Lane Johnson's getting paid a ton of money. They paid Goddard. I feel like Devonta Smith isn't going to get a payday because obviously they were paying A.J. Brown a boatload of money, and A.J. Brown is better than Devonta Smith. So I was wondering if you guys think, like, I don't know, if Devonta Smith will be back. I mean, I think it's at least one more year till he's a free agent because um, he just had his fifth-year option picked up. So he's under contract yeah. this year and technically next year. So he's a free agent in 2026. I don't know. Uh, I guess a lot can change by then. So I'm looking at I'm looking at their payroll um, for the Eagles in 2026 right now. AJ Brown hitting the cap for 41 million. You can almost assume he's going to get another extension, and like they would break that up over the next years. Because um, this is two full, three full seasons from now, 2024, five, and mm -hmm. this will be the third season. Um, I mean, Sa they might Saquon might be gone by then in two years. They, they, there's probably an out after two in that contract. Dickerson will still be on the books, Huff, Lane Johnson, but James Bradbury's on the books for $20 million this year. I don't, like, there's an out after after next year to where he, his dead cat will be seven mil. So there's enough room to work with there. I just don't know, I don't know how the rest of the roster is going to fill out, but it does make sense to say if 40 to Brown, 35 to Hurts, I think it said at that, at that year, and then 30 to Smith, that's a lot of money for uh, three guys. That's yeah. almost half the cap. And when their defense is mean, already that bad. I mean, I think he'll still be there because the Eagles want to win right now. And the fact that we know how good Smith is already in that system. And until the NFL decides to make significant changes to the way the salary works, they can always just delay the money. They can always just rework contracts. Like, I feel like if yeah. they want if they want to keep him, they will make it their agenda to keep him. So I, I think he will be staying in Philly yeah. unless I mean, if a team offers them like a first round pick, sure, you probably take that. But I don't know if a team will be offering first round picks for Devontae Smith also, and then pay him 30 mil a year. Mm -hmm. I also want to say that I got a Twitter notification like yesterday that the Eagles, yeah, Sports Illustrated article about a day ago that Eagles are making efforts to sign to a contract extension. So it's already happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess so. And it's kind of crazy too with like the fifth year option and you can tag them twice that they could just be under contract for seven years as well. It, well, if you want to pay yeah. the tag, obviously um okay so yeah I that one, I, figured out this. yeah i was curious about that um so tom who was your uh, second guy that you have that you really liked uh signing this offseason 
Um, I'm going to give Dom a shout out here. I did like Jonah Williams, the Cardinals here. I think he, it is only a two-year deal. However, he is going to play opposite of um, another young tackle. I said it was Paris Johnson. I'm blanking the name Dom. Who is it? Um, it no, is. You're, you're right. It, it is Paris Johnson. Oh, all right. You, yes. Dar you is. were confused with Darnell Wright last time. Darnell Wright, yes. Uh, last video, we talked about it. I mixed the two of them up for some reason. But, so, he's going to pair along uh, opposite side Paris Johnson. Two-year deal, but it's only $30 million. And I think we probably all thought he was going to get more than $15 million a year. And the Cardinals, I think a, a decently free team-friendly deal if they can just get... They already know Kyler is uh, a Pro Bowl-level quarterback. And if you want to assume, I guess, they get Marvin Harrison. So you're building a good foundation piece for that offense. And I think they could flip it around kind of quick. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm for this contract. Yeah, my, my only worry is signing... Like, everyone for the past few years has just talked about how bad the Bengals' O-line is. And now here we go, sign a guy from them. Like, it's one of those things where... Like, I, that's just in the back of my head. Because we've been trashing the Bengals for a few years. And now now that he's on the Cardinals, I just have to hope he, like, turns it around. Or maybe he wasn't the problem. And I'm hoping he wasn't the problem in Cincinnati. Well, you remember that Burrow interview where he was like, yeah, I mean, sacks don't matter. Sacks on third down. And then th that's fine. The drive, the drive is over anyway. So, I mean, you, you can accredit a third of the Bengals' offensive line problems just Burrow trying to extend the play. And that's a great spin zone. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I like that. <laughs> All right, uh, my second guy, um, maybe also another homer pick, but I'm going to go with Patrick Queen to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, That's a homer pick. Three, okay, let me let me uh, explain my case. He's 24 years old. He was the 24th ranked inside linebacker out of 85 um, eligible by PFF last year. He uh, signed three years, $41 million, and they could theoretically cut him after this year if it doesn't go well. Um, I think just getting sure. somebody on um, a three-year deal, not like a five-year deal like or a monster deal that like Tremaine Edmonds got – who's getting paid $5 million more than Patrick Queen. Um, I just think was pretty good value for the Steelers um, at the inside linebacker position and getting him from like a division rival is huge as well. Um, and somebody that like, he's got a $17 million cap hit with only $7 million dead cap next year and then only $3 million dead cap in the final year. So they could technically get out of it whenever they wanted, but I just think he's making $7 million or $5 million less than Tremaine Edmonds. Um, not better than Fred Warner, but making $6 million less. Maybe on par with Roquan Smith and he's getting paid $7 million less than him. I just thought it was pretty good value for the Steelers. I don't know if he was in your guys' mind. I don't know if that's a homer pick, and that's why I'm going with it, but I thought it was pretty good value for the Steelers. So I said it was a homer pick, and then I remembered his deal is three for 41, not three for 51. And I'm like, 351 is a little more. That's like that's edge rusher money. But three for 41, I think, is fine. Like 13 million average. He's only hitting the cap for six million this year, and they can cut him if he stinks. So I think, and they can give him another extension too. He'll only be 28 if they extend him another year. So yeah, I think. And they, their linebackers have been so bad, and he'll be the best inside linebacker they've had since uh, since Brian Chase here. And you know he knows the division, so. I I was gonna say that. Do you think he's uh, giving up the Ravens trade secrets right away, or do you think he keeps that? Dude, uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I decided to go with Queen. Um, so Dom, who's your who's your last guy? Uh, so last up, I'm not gonna say this is a homer pick, but because it's not my team. Um, so whatever the the equivalent is of a homer pick of a just a guy I like. Um, the Vikings signing Andrew Van Ginkle I thought was a great signing. I mean, them losing um, Daniil Hunter. Van Ginkle coming in for 2 for 20. He had 6 sacks last year and only 11 starts. He also had a pick. He had a few um, pass deflections. Like, he's just all over the field. And I think the Vikings defense could really use that. It's a relatively cheap contract. So if his role expands, I think he'll play well above his price tag. And there is a ton of playing time now in Minnesota because they lost Hunter. So I think... Um, I think Van Ginkle could be in for a big season this year. Yeah, I like, I like that. that. I, I was big on Van Ginkle to start the offseason. I think uh, he was going to be really solid to, for whatever team wound up getting him. All right, Tom, who's your last guy? Uh, my last guy is going to be, it may be like kind of a square pick, but Derek Henry, the Ravens, for two for 16. Um, I, I think it's fantastic because the Ravens, Again, they seem to have finally had their best wide receiver seemingly in years in Zay Flowers, who's still not really a true number one. Um, but they, they have Andrews, who hopefully should be um, back to full strength by end, uh, by the end of the offseason. They still have Likely, who broke out a little bit. Flowers, Likely, Andrews, and Henry. It's a bit of a strange combo, but when you add in the running ability of Lamar, it's not like a traditional weapon set based on positions, but I think it's still 
could be could make some real noise and the ravens their rushing attack's been so good over the last whatever how many years just because of really lamar if you add a legitimately top tier running back into that system i think it could it can make their um goal line scheme better their short their short yard scheme better everything i think is going to get better for the ravens in terms of the run game it'll make them even scarier in the past game like just by um teams having to plan for both yeah i, I had him run down as well and like you're getting still an elite running back for just that cheap of a price tag uh, the same price it, as, as tony pollard and he's yeah. way better than tony pollard, pollard is for sure um, my last pick is also kind of like a square pick as well because it's a one-year deal and uh, there's really no such thing as a bad one-year deal but I think just the Chiefs getting Hollywood Brown for seven million dollars like he is still probably a top like 30th receiver in the league um, and he's getting paid around like Kendrick Bourne money Zay Jones money Curtis Samuel money Juju Smith-Schuster money like that's a pretty good bargain for a Chiefs team then now with all the Rasheed Rice like stuff coming out like desperately need some speed out there and another receiver um, and he's honestly like Hollywood Brown's played with some pretty good quarterbacks in his career so far like kyler lamar and now mahomes like he's still just 26 he's gonna be 27 um and it was a little bit of a down year last year i mean playing with dobbs and that carousel of quarterbacks before kyler came back but uh pretty good one-year deal and like i guess you can also kind of lump if he stays healthy mike williams in that as well because pretty good value if mike williams can stay healthy 10 million for him for one year is good but that's a big f this was a this was a pretty good thirty minutes. I got Tom calling Kyler Murray a Pro Bowl level <clears throat> Pro Bowl level quarterback. Matt saying he's a good quarterback. Like I don't know what's going on right now, but I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's a good quarterback. Yeah, is he a elite quarterback? No, he's a good quarterback. Um, no, he's certainly above average. Yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. Unless there was any other names you guys had like jotted down, you want to give like a shout out to, but. Um. No, no, because I, I I had the overlaps because we double name some guys mm -hmm. okay sounds good so um yeah i hope you guys did enjoy let us know in the comments if you're watching on youtube maybe your favorite or least favorite free agency signings from this off season and if you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify we'd appreciate a uh, rating and review or just following over there as well so we'll catch you guys in the next one peace